If you want to learn how to use the budget toolkit spreadsheet, the exact same spreadsheet that I have used since 2011, 2012 to track my income and expenses every single month, then stick around. I'm going through step-by-step -step how to use this bad boy. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is my shirt. And if this offends you, <laughs> then get off the channel because we're about to make budgeting yo bitch too. Hey, what's up guys? It's Justine with Debt Free Millennials, the channel for all things millennial money and debt free living. If you want to learn how to become debt free, subscribe to the channel. Today I am using and walking through a tutorial of how to use the budget toolkit. This is the one single tool that has helped me the most to become debt free so quickly. And I want to give it to you guys because it has been a tremendous value to me. And I know you'll see the value in it too. I think if you want to learn how to use a budget spreadsheet and actually do this thing step by step and feel your money, this is where you need to be. So let's hop into it. Here we go. The first thing you are going to do is you're going to head to debtfreemillennials.com slash toolkit. I will have a link to this in the video below. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to head here and then you are going to pop in your name and your email and you'll click yes, send me the toolkit. Okay, you'll be taken to the DFM toolkit where you'll have one of my debt free charts and then the budget template. You won't be able to edit this because this is the dummy template for everybody. So what you're going to do is you're going to open it. You're going to open it up and then what you can do is you can click file and make a copy and then you can re rename it to whatever you want. So I'm going to do Justine's blah, 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 put it into my own folder, Google Drive. Okay. And then this is automatically going to save it. This is automatically going to save it into your own Google Drive. So this is your own template and copy because you cannot edit the dummy template because that's for everybody. Otherwise, they're going to see all of your stuff. So I've got instructions here at the bottom. So let's just go over all of these. So the first tab that you have here is the yearly glance tab. And this is everything in your, this is everything in your um, monthly and yearly budget so that you can see how much you're spending on things in one year. And then I've also included percentages. So if you go over to this, I've just included some uh, numbers in here just to get you started but let's say your rent is one thousand dollars you can just type it in and then this will automatically update for you so you can change these things and start going through and actually see okay wow if i'm bringing in three thousand dollars a month a third of that is going to rent and you can also change your monthly payments for any of your loans and that will automatically update as well so this is a great page to kind of get you thinking about your income and expenses in annual terms. I don't think a lot of people take advantage of that because if they did, then you could make better changes and better financial decisions for yourself. All right, so that's the yearly glance tab. I've also included just to get you started what the monthly budget tabs look like. So I've got January and February. And the reason why I didn't do all 12 months is because you're probably going to change your budgeted items in here. So rather than changing that for every single month moving forward, you would just make the changes for one month and then you click on this little arrow and then you would click duplicate. And then that's going to make a copy of what you just did for February. And then you can rename this March and rename this March up here. Cool. All right. So that's how you would start filling out your budget toolkit. So let's go over this. I included some dummy numbers in here for January. But here's what you'll want to pay attention to. There are really three different sections to the budget toolkit. The first section is your debt. 
you're going to list out all of your debt, including car loans, student loans, credit card debt, all of those things go into debt. I do not include mortgage as part of your debt. I would put mortgage down here where it says rent. So whatever it is for you, that's your fixed budgeted item. We'll get to that in a second. But in the debt section, you're going to list every debt, car, student loan, and credit cards. You're going to list your monthly minimum payment for each. You're going to list what you actually put towards your debt because the idea here is that you're going to put more towards the minimum payment to pay it off. Then you're going to list your total debt. This way you can see exactly where you stand every single month. All right, the next section over here, very fun, one of my favorites, forecasted and actual. So you have your total monthly income and your total monthly expenses. So what I want you to do is under the forecasted column, forecast how much you're going to take home in income. So it could be if you have a steady full-time job with a steady paycheck, it could be the same every single month. But the idea here is, Maybe you try to pick up some side hustles or make extra income so that you can put it towards your debt. And then your actual is what you actually brought in for the month. So I put a note here, and this is included in your copy. Don't forget to include any cash income from selling unwanted items or picking up freelance gigs, side hustle jobs, babysitting, house sitting, pet sitting, whatever it is. Add all of those things into your actual income. And then same goes for your total monthly expenses. Your total monthly expenses, you'll see I already did the like cell calculation for you, but your total monthly expenses will equal what you've put down here, because this is your actual, what you actually spent, and then what you actually spent towards your debt payment. So it's those two items. So you're gonna add those up for the forecasted, so forecasted column, and then what you actually spent. And then this is your net. Your net should be as close to zero as possible. So every dollar has a name, every dollar has a place to go. So if you have money left over, you can allocate that money towards your debt. So if I had $188, I would definitely be putting it towards one of my debt items. If it's negative, then that means you went over budget. No bueno. You got to figure out where your problem areas are and try to solve that one at a time. All right, so that's the two sections, debt and then your total income and expenses with the forecasted and actual for each. Then you are going to go down to the actual budgeted categories. So I actually break this down into four different groups. It's the four Fs, fixed, fun, fudge, and future. So your fixed expenses, let's go over that first. So fixed budgeted items are anything that are really predictable and generally the same amount of money every single time. And these are also generally things that you have to pay for. So things like your mortgage or your rent, um, your cell phone, internet, um, Netflix, if you do that, that's generally the same every single month. Your groceries, you absolutely need food. And then I also included other things that I personally pay for every single month. So taxes, gas, oil change, tags, repairs, tires, car insurance, renter's insurance, those types of things should be under your fixed category. A note about car insurance and other one-time or semi-annual expenses. If you pay for things once a year or twice a year, what you can do is you can break that expense up into a monthly payment towards yourself you can either set it aside in a separate savings account or you can keep it in your checking account i've done that before and then when you go to make that payment you just pull it out of that savings account you pull it out of your checking account and you pay for that but i set aside so i don't accidentally spend that money every single month. So I may only pay my taxes or our CPA once a year, but I set aside my CPA's fees on a monthly basis. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if that makes sense. All right, and same goes with renter's insurance. I pay mine uh, every six months. I get a better discount doing that, but I set aside the money on a monthly basis. It comes out of my budget so that I don't accidentally spend it on something else. Bueno, 
All right, so the fun category, my favorite part of the budget, I put all of the fun entertainment stuff into its own category. So the subsection fun, I have restaurants, shopping, clothing, haircut, gifts, pocket money, which is usually just like a couple of $20 bills in my wallet for whatever. And then fun money would be all of my entertainment stuff, going to the movies, bars, uh, golf, whatever you like to spend your fun money on, that's up to you. And that can have its own place in your budget. I'm all about still having fun and working on paying down your debt. Yes. And then the fudge, um, the fudge is anytime you forget something. So if you forget like a birthday card for your mom, use this miscellaneous category as your cushion. So I typically just put in $20. If you end up using the miscellaneous fudge category a lot, then you may want to add that in as a budgeted item somewhere either in fun or fixed. Then your future category. So every good budget has a savings category for your future. So I typically include if you're just starting your debt free journey and you don't have an emergency savings put together, that's where the oh shit fund comes into play. And that's what it's like a oh shit. I forgot this. There's an unexpected expense. There's an emergency. I need money. Oh shit. That's coming from a separate savings account. So you would need minimum $1,000 in that emergency fund. But what I'm finding is so many of us need more than that. I would suggest at least two months of living expenses. So not including like extra payments towards debt or extra savings goals or anything like that. But what do you need to live solidly for two months? I would definitely put that into your oh shit fund. And then I also included a vacation fund. I contributed to a vacation fund while I was paying down my debt. It may have been just $100 a month, but it still was a great way for me to reward myself during my debt-free journey, even though I was putting massive amounts towards student loan debt. I was putting $1,000 per month towards student loan debt and then 100 bucks towards vacation fund, and I was very comfortable with that. So that's up to you guys if you want to include vacation fund, maybe a new car fund, something like that you could put into the future category. And then that includes, that is included in your overall budget. So I've broken it out into two columns here. So you'll have the forecasted, what, what you think you will spend in each category. And then if there's a, a category missing for you, please just add that in. All you have to do is insert another one and boom, there it is. Um, and then the actual column at the end of every single month, you are going to record how much you actually spent in each category. So if you went over, like groceries would be one that I, I've easily gone over in the past. You can highlight it. And typically what I do is I just change the color if it's over. So let's just 200 and I'm over. So I would highlight it and then I would make note of that for the next month that that's a problem area that I need to work on and be better at. So this is what you actually spent and then you can see what changes you can make for the next month. So if you're wondering like how to do this, you end up going back into your debit card or if you are responsibly using a credit card and paying it off every single month, you would go into that credit card statement or your bank account statement and you would add up every single time you went to the grocery store. And what I typically do when I'm doing this is, let's reset this. I go to the grocery store at least four or five times a month. So what you can do is you can hit the equal sign and then you can type in from your bank account statement or your credit card statement Every single time you go to the grocery store, you'll look it up and you'll see your grocer's name and you'll start adding it up. So I'm just typing in, I see $45.76, $123.89, and $32.12. Okay, now I can see, all right, I've been three times and I'm already over by 20 bucks. So then I would just highlight it red like this and see that I need to work on that as a area to improve upon. 
Same thing for restaurants. As I go out to restaurants, I will manually enter how much I've spent and look at my bank statement or look at my credit card statement and start adding these things up. And one thing that I do, you don't have to do this, but I like doing it so I can see because I'm like, whoa, I already spent $56 in restaurants. Where and what did I get? Sometimes I'll just right click and I'll insert a note and I'll say, oh, I went to McDonald's. <laughs> I went to Chipotle. And then I went to this really fun, like, Italy kitchen fancy place. And then that way I know, like, where does this money come from? Oh, I went one, two, three, whatever it is. Then I can see exactly where I spent my money. That's been helpful for me, adding little notes. And then I can start tracking this very simply. So you can see I've already filled this one out. If you get this first month's budget to where you want it to be, then that's where you can go back in and click duplicate. And then you can rename the, this for the next month and then just zero out these numbers and you start all over again and start forecasting. End of the month, beginning of the month is like my favorite time because you get to start all over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the budget toolkit walkthrough tutorial. I hope that helps you. You can download the toolkit below. One thing that you will notice in my beers and budgeting episodes is I've actually customized it for me to include running totals because Kyle and I have different categories where we roll over money towards the next month. I haven't included it in the dummy template, but if you want me to, I certainly can. Let me know in the comments if that's a feature that you want and I will include it and update this video to include that. But uh, things like clothing or fun money or what else do we have that rolls over? Shopping, apartment decor, I've been saving up for that. So all of that money rolls over into the next month. So it, for example, if I don't spend any money on clothes and I budget $50 per month towards myself, if I don't spend that $50, then that gets rolled over into the next month. And then I just keep track of the running totals for every category like that inside of my budget. And then I can see, oh, actually I've saved 150 bucks towards my clothing budget. I think I wanna use all of that in one setting and go on a shopping trip. So I can treat myself like that because I've been able to save for it every single month. Okay. How many of you guys feel like you are ready to do this and ready to tackle? Look at your budget every single month using the toolkit. Let me know in the comments. I can't wait to see you crush it. Make this your bitch. It is time to get her done and start living a debt-free life.